Hey guys, MVC here for the Scampro Gaming Tab for another video review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the white glossy edition of the Steel Series Rival, a right-handed ergonomic design mouse featuring the Pixar 3310 sensor. For those of you that follow my videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of the previous now discontinued Razer Death Adder 3.5G and since then I've always been on the lookout for the next best that kind of shape mouse and the Steel Series Rival in many ways is a take on it albeit does have some differences slightly longer slightly thinner but aside from that it's kind of going for the same market so we're going to jump into a quick overview have a look at driver software and setup have a look at some acceleration and mouse button debounce tests gameplay thoughts and final thoughts right at the end so I hope you enjoy the video any questions or comments throughout and I'm sure I'll get back to you after the video has been published and for now we'll catch you at the end. The SteelSeries Rival is a right-handed ergonomic shaped mouse with six programmable buttons. The addition we got is the white glossy surface but also does come in a soft touch rubber coated surface if you get the default Rival or any of the game or eSport editions. The mouse itself is definitely on the larger side at a length of a very long 133mm, a width of 70 and a height of 45 with my length of palm being about 18.5cm. It was not a problem with its weight of 110 grams without the cable and 128 width but anything smaller Smaller, and I definitely look if you're sticking with Steel Series toward the Kana V2 or Kinzu V3, depending if you need side buttons. Now, the sensor inside is the Pixar 3310 with DPI from 50 up to 6500 in increments of 50, all of which are native, and the sensor features a max speed of 200 inches per second, which is going to be more than enough regardless of the sensitivity you use, and you shouldn't make it malfunction when doing fast swipes. Now, in terms of switches, they're using Steel Series switches rated for up to 30 million clicks. My first first time using them in fact and the only issue here in reference to the length of the mouse is that my fingers end about two centimeters before the end and depending on where you push the buttons down they feel lighter or slightly heavier and whilst they were never too light that you'd accidentally push them down or too heavy that they were tiring over use it is important to bear in mind I can't give an exact answer for everybody but what I can say is if you have slightly smaller hands pushing mouse 5 is going to be tough as it's definitely toward the front of the mouse but aside from that most people should be fine providing they have a larger hand size of 17 centimeters and accessing all the buttons and that you had no complaints with them whatsoever and it can be both palm and claw gripped with no issue. Now on top of the mouse we can find our two zone full RGB 16.8 million color LEDs, one on the mouse wheel and one where your palm rests for the Steel Series logo. These can all be customized in Steel Series Engine 3 for both steady, breathing and color shift effects. Now underneath the mouse we can find our four mouse feet, all of which need to be removed to gain access to the internals. And the cable is a two meter soft rubber cable, not braided, but again, not the end of the world. Some people prefer that. And some would argue it does reduce the risk of getting caught on certain surfaces. Now before jumping in a driver overview, I wanna quickly mention my issues with build. Firstly, I have read reports that for people that use the mouse for prolonged periods and have higher acidity levels as they sweat, they have been known to wear down the injected rubber side grips. Now this has never been an issue for me on any of the products that I've used with rubber grips but it's something to bear in mind if you've had that problem before that it could potentially happen to you. Now secondly the one that's kind of questionable is that it almost feels to me like Steel Series took the foam model that they were busy chiseling down until it was comfortable and despite getting a comfortable shape that I have no issues gripping or throwing around the mouse pad with and I wouldn't in fact change much to it beside maybe make it a little bit shorter in length if you were to look at the underside and some of the curves and edges of the mouse, it's almost as if they didn't tidy it up and they just threw it into the injection molder for mass production. It looks a little bit cheap. It doesn't feel cheap in the hand, but it just looks off. And I think that's the only way I can really describe how it looks. And I, I don't know whether you think the same, maybe you'll disagree. But anyway, moving into drivers. First, let's have a look at the software bundled with the Steel Series Rival. It's Engine 3, and you're going to need to download it from SteelSeries.com, which is going to update you on any firmware, fixing issues that may have already been ironed out since launch. Now, the White Rival happened to be pre installed with the latest edition, which is firmware version 1.8.0.0 as of the 4th of February 2015. But if you get the Black Soft Touch Rubber Coated Rival or any of the eSport editions, you may get the prompt. And if you don't, in the upper left here, you'll be able to check if you're up to date. But under settings, we also can choose our language and whether to automatically start SteelSeries Engine 3 login. Finally, on the upper right, we find our cloud preferences. Now, it's completely optional, but you can choose to sign in to sync 
all of your configuration settings and library settings, meaning if you take advantage of this and assign various configurations to different executable files, it's going to back up all of your configuration settings, which if we click on arrival right here, we've got all our configs on the left. We can edit, delete and duplicate and also create new ones, which we can tie in here to applications to auto launch as well. Now, if you don't want to take advantage of all the different configurations, this mouse will save one to the onboard profile. So it doesn't matter where you go, you will take your usual CPI steps with you. Now, in terms of CPI step, this is my only real disappointment with the software. You can only choose between two and whilst you can change them in increments of 50 all the way up to 6,500, all of which are native, by the way, plus you can also type them in. Some people want 400, 800, 1600, and let's say 3200, for example, and two just doesn't cut it depending on the games you play. The only way around it is to rebind, let's say, button five. If we click this and hit the drop down to launch configuration and have two different configurations with different CPI levels, but then you're losing a button. On top of that, you can also do macros, mouse buttons, keyboard buttons, media buttons, deactivate, launch application, and restore to default. Plus, you can set a rapid fire play number of times and all that kind of thing. But if we hit cancel and just come out of that, that is, like I say, my only real disappointment. Plus, maybe the lack of being able to adjust the liftoff height. It's about one to two millimeters right now. And whilst it hasn't proven to be a problem on the black QCK or the QCK eSport edition or the Razer Goliathus Speed 2014 edition with the big Razer Prim, and there may be some mouse pads on the market where because of the lower liftoff distance, when you transition over to another color, it may stop tracking or skip. But as of yet, on the mouse pads I've tried, there has been no problem. It's just important to point out that you cannot change it in case of it happening. But you can also create macros down here, which you would tie into a button. And on the right hand side, we can see acceleration and deceleration. Deceleration is not something you want to use, but acceleration might be. We'll jump into detail on this a little bit later on. But if you play a number of games, being able to customize it to this kind of level in the software is a good thing, as you're going to be able to take it from game to game. We've got angle snapping, which allows you to draw straight lines easier. Great if you play something like Counter Strike. But I would say it's not a good indication. At least on firmware version 1.8.0.0, it doesn't appear to be as strong as it looks. It's still quite weak, but it does allow you to draw straight to horizontal lines, which would keep you on the head level much easier. And finally, polling rate, 125, 250, 500, and 1000. 1000 being one millisecond, and 125 being eight. Of course, you would want 1000 updates more times per second, more responsive. But last and but not least, we do have our full RGB logos currently set to a breathing purpley effect as is my keyboard to the left. We can also change it to steady and to color shift. The only real disappointment in this area of color shift being you've only got four presets and as you can see we cannot actually alter the colors in this mode. We are just set to these four presets but you know it does work nonetheless as you can see. So yeah, I mean, overall, I guess I'm satisfied with the software, particularly the option to sign into the cloud not being a requirement is great. But just a couple of settings that I've seen with the 3310 on other mice and the lack of more than two CPI levels that I guess let it down. But apart from that, there's no complaints. So yeah, moving on to acceleration tests. So for those that watch my reviews, you'll notice this is familiar territory. We're going to demonstrate a lack of acceleration here on the 3310 optical sensor after it's now been implemented into the SteelSeries rival. So positioning our rival to the left of our QCK heavy mouse pad along this wall here with our crosshair, we're going to move the mouse from the left to the right of our QCK heavy until it stops tracking, which happens to be along this line right here, just out from this point. Now, if it was a laser sensor, there's some inherent amount of positive and negative acceleration which cannot be disabled. So if you move it quicker, we might actually end up over here, or we could even end up shy of it, depending on how fast we're moving the mouse and the sensor being used. So aligning it up again, we're this time going to move it quick. And again, we are just about the same again, taking into account some small degree of human error, as I am not a complete machine. We're going to do it a third time for science. And as you can see, about in the same place. So there is a lack of acceleration here on the sensor, which is great, meaning if we move our mouse 10 centimeters across the mouse pad, it doesn't matter how fast or slow we move it, we're always gonna end up in the same place in game with our crosshair. So we can train those flick shots, our muscle memory, and on top of that, if we like to play with acceleration, which is not a bad thing, in Quake and 1v1 games especially, it can be great. We might opt to lower our sensitivity to 0.1, which means it's very slow, and we might add some acceleration, for example, 0.03, 
We get the slow movement, we also get the flicks, and if we don't want to go ridiculously fast in Quake Live, we can also do CL mouse sense cap and do 1.04, which was our old sensitivity meaning We get the slow movement, we get the flicks, and it also caps out at a certain point. So again, being able to add your preferred amount of acceleration is exactly where we want to be, and the Steel Series Rival is going to give you no issues whatsoever. A great implementation of the sensor in that respect. But anyway, let's jump into some button debounce tests, rocking, jumping, and mini jumps in Shoot Mania. So our final test before jumping into gameplay is to show there's no issues here with the mouse button debounce time on the Steel Series Rival. So if you use mouse one to fire and mouse two to jump in a game like Quake, doing a full height rocket jump with a higher debounce time of let's say 50 milliseconds or some of the more unfortunate mice on the market will mean that one of those buttons is going to be slightly delayed by 50 milliseconds and therefore doing a full height rocket jump is just not possible. On top of that, here in Shoot Mania you can variable jump, so pressing and holding a little bit will do a full height, tapping will do a smaller height and really tapping we'll do a tiny one and what I want to demonstrate here in Shoot Mania is that I can hold the mouse with the left hand and simply tap the right mouse button with my right and see if we can do consecutive mini jumps as you can see no issues here with the Steel Series rival to mini jump here in Shoot Mania meaning that if we jump in a Quake Live and try and do a rocket jump on DM6 from the red armor to the bridge we have no problems and also on Blood Run doing a rocket jump from the lower yellow up to the shotgun area near red armor so anyway all good here with the Steel Series rival let's actually jump into my thoughts on gameplay so moving on to gameplay with the Steel Series rival probably going to be the shortest segment as per usual with my mouse review but happy to report the 3310 sensor inside of the rival felt as good as I remember having reviewed the Mionics Avia and Nail 7000 previously. It felt snappy, responsive and I had no issues tracking enemy model directional changes in Quake 3 Aim and Amphi or making large or micro adjustments with the mouse. All the settings in the drivers were great to mess around with and although there was a few settings I'd like to see added, no complaints when it came to actual gameplay. Now in terms of the button latency, I was initially worried that it might be on the higher side having used the Kinzu V2 Pro previously. That had higher button latency that was definitely noticeable when firing railgun or AKs in Counter-Strike, but here where the rival was definitely perfect and ideal and nobody will be complaining about that whatsoever. Now in terms of your sensitivity, both low and high are going to be just fine with this mouse. It's rated at 200 inches per second, which in practice turned out to be 194 on a Steel Series QCK Heavy, translating to 4.92 meters per second in a notice when testing at 1600 dpi and 1000 hertz. So in all, no complaints when it comes to gaming with the Steel Series rival. So let's go ahead and move into final thoughts. Okay, so final thoughts for the Steel Series rival. A very comfortable mouse, no complaints, and to be honest, I actually prefer the reduced width to something like the 3.0, the Zowie EC1 or Razor Death Adder. Something I never thought I'd say, because I do consider those shapes at least to be god tier. But I actually prefer the width of this because I feel like I get more control over it when I use a higher sensitivity. And thank god they didn't go the route of a lot of gaming mice these days where they add a lip that extends at the bottom. Because I like my pinky and thumb to be on the mouse pad so I can push down if I need to and get even more control to grip the mouse when I need to. But in terms of sensor, like I said, it's exactly as responsive as I remember having reviewed the Mionix mice on the old channel. And I have no complaints and it's definitely a mouse you can win tournaments with. The only things you've really got to consider is your palm length because again the button actuation force requirement gets more the further back you go so that's why I kind of put a 17 centimeter limit on your palm size because if you go too far back it's just too annoying to push down sort of like here gets heavy wouldn't want to use it myself but at the point where I am and any further forward bigger hands you're going to be more than satisfied with it now, in terms of the rubber side grips, like I said, it could potentially be a problem for those of you with higher acidity levels. I've read complaints about that on forums, personally. I've never had that issue with any rubber grips I've used on any mouse. Uh, I feel like, I mean, I don't sweat at all. My hands don't. And that's why I went for the glossy edition as well. If you sweat, the rubber coated surface probably going to be the one for you. Going to get more grip over it. But personally, the glossy is the way I go. Uh, so yeah, if you can get over the fact that it does look like a small child with safety scissors cut out the template for this mouse at the bottom, it does look really good on the top and from every other angle pretty much. And it is a mouse to consider and a mouse you could definitely win tournaments with and I would definitely add it as my backup mouse into the draw. I have no reason to swap at the moment 
but once I do, this is a mouse I'll probably use. And if you're in the market, it's one to consider. And I guess that's all I can really end on. So thanks guys for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Any questions, as always, just add them below and I will get back to you. But for now, check out the product on scan.co.uk. Currently only the black soft touch rubber coated surface edition of the mouse is available to pre-order. It's currently at £40 as of 5th of February 2015. But if you are in the market for the white, you could request it at scan or go ahead and pick it up at steelseries.com. So yeah, uh, I'll catch you next time, I guess, here on the Scan Pro Gaming tab. Take care and have a good day.